Oh, what's up guys? Welcome to uh, hopefully a winter duck episode. So it's what? It's the beginning of November. We're at 7,000 feet and it's still 70 degrees. So I'm hoping that there are winter ducks here. I'm at my favorite lake, Lake Roberts, uh, up in the Gila, north of my house. I'm doing a little camping. And I, well, I did check on eBird uh, last week and ugh, pants. There were some some of the winter ducks that I'm looking for here. My nemesis duck is not here yet that I know of, the hooded merganser. Um, but mostly, we just wanted to get out while the weather was still really nice, test out some of our new uh, rooftop camping setup in the potentially cold. <laughs> camera lady was not hoping for cold. Yeah, camera lady is definitely not hoping for cold. Uh, so this is ideal, probably. But uh, in the morning, it's going to get cold. And hopefully, the other reason they're out here is this guy. So you guys know I got my 500. Um, very, I've been loving it. I had it for a couple months now, you know. But I haven't been able to do any, like, waterfowl or anything, really. So this is kind of like my first time out with it for doing hopefully the winter ducks and i'm really excited just to see what i get uh it is it's it's almost four o'clock right now and the, the sun's about to go behind the mountain so we're going to start losing light soon so we're going to go do an evening round this is where i got those ospreys this is where i filmed the initial video with that if you haven't seen that about the whole whys and hows and everything that i got that uh lens and i got those awesome osprey diving shots this is well, it's the only lake around and it's the only osprey around for at least a couple hundred miles. All right, hold on one second. Okay, so yeah, we're gonna go just walk around for the evening and see what we see. Um, I'm not gonna try too hard to be discreet right now, but that'll come in the morning. In the morning, I'm definitely gonna get camoed up and get the ghillie suit on and, and head out and, and see if I can get anything uh, better. But I think we got good chances this evening. I'm definitely hoping for some osprey diving. We also do get um, we do get eagles. We get a, a pair of bald eagles here every winter. So usually one or two pairs. I don't know if they're here yet, though. It's, it's still pretty warm. They might not be here. But the osprey should still be here. Okay, let's do this. There's a deer right there. A couple of deer, actually. They don't really seem to care that we're out. Of course, we're kind of at a campground. It's a pretty primitive campground, but uh, it's still cool. The other day, there was some turkeys walking right through the, like, right here, right through this exact spot. That was pretty cool. No such luck today. Well, we didn't have we didn't have too good of luck this afternoon. Uh, zero raptors. I was very surprised. I didn't hear any. I didn't see any. No raptors at all. And uh, very few of the 
the winter birds that I was hoping have showed up. A bunch of the ruddy ducks are here. I did see a couple of canvas backs that were pretty far away. I uh, couldn't get close to them this evening. One pied bill grebe. The pied bill grebes are always here, but I was surprised I didn't see more. Oh yeah, and the ringneck. The we saw a couple of ringnecks, which was pretty cool. I got a, a two-star photo average shot of them, but I did get some cool footage. All right, well, we're gonna wrap it up here. We're gonna make some dinner and then climb into bed. And that's the one thing that I was just telling camera lady. It sucks so bad about the winter time. Is the daylight savings just ended? was it yesterday and um, so now it's like only 5 30 and it's like pitch black almost <laughs> so got a lot of time to kill got some books to read got some sleep to get to <laughs> and then we'll go out in the morning and we'll see what's up after that so we'll see you in a second <laughs> for you So we made it home back in the studio. Uh, the morning was kind of a bust too. The basically camera lady definitely didn't get up with me uh, because it was too cold. 70 something during the day and then it dropped down to like high 20s during the night. We slept fine though. We stayed pretty warm, which was very surprising, especially on camera lady's part. So the new gear worked out well. Anyways, I get home and I'm looking through these images and nothing amazing is jumping out at me. But the thing that stuck out to me when I was editing these images and like going through and, and looking at what I got and basically it comes down to like, I've seen this a lot on my channel. I've seen this a lot on comments. I've seen this a lot on other videos and other people. And it seems to be a mentality that a lot of people have and it's easy to fall into this, this mentality. And that basically is, I thought this gear would be better whatever the gear is. I thought this lens would be better. I thought this camera body would be better. I, you know, I bought this lens based on reviews. Everyone said, this is amazing. I see all my favorite wildlife professionals using this gear or this lens or that camera and they get amazing stuff. And then you go out and you shoot something and then you come back and you're just like really disappointed with your images and say, gee, I just bought this fancy lens. I just bought this fancy camera whatever it was, all my favorite wildlife people have it or they recommend it or whatever, and my images don't look like theirs. And now I'm depressed. And that's a very common and sadly logical progression that a lot of people, mindset that a lot of people fall into. In my case, I just spent a lot of money on the 500 and I've had it for a couple months. And while I have gotten a lot of what I personally consider very good images that I'm happy with, I've also taken a lot of bad images with it and not bad, but you know, like not great. And that's just statistically speaking, that's gonna happen, you know. Most of our images that we take are not going to be good or not gonna be great. And the very few will stand out and they'll be the keepers or the portfolio worthy ones. So I got a lot of images like this, which, you know, this is subjective. You may or may not like these, or you may or may not think that they're any good. Uh, but, you know, some golden hour, some nice ducks, um, nothing too crazy. And the golden hour light to me is what's really helping this. Uh, and then, of course, the depth of field from the F4 and all of that kind of goodness. But then you have to realize that I just lied to you. <laughs> kind of like right now, like all of that was kind of a lie. And it's a lie because it's editing. So let's jump in the computer. I want to edit a couple of these with you so you can see what these images from my 500 f4 look like and then what i made them look like because this is a huge point that i want to drive home here is that when you see an amazing wildlife photographer and you love their work and it's like mind-blowing and you know what they sometimes they list what gear that they have and you know what gear that they have and then maybe you have the same gear or you have very similar gear and your images look nothing like that you've got to remember that not only are they a great photographer and they know the settings, they know the gear, they have the good stuff, but the most important thing is they know how to edit. And that's my point is that my images, a lot of these other images from the best wildlife photographers that you follow, most if not all of them are highly edited. And I'm not calling anybody out here because I do it and I am not a purist and I love editing and I think it's perfectly okay. Uh, but that's, semantics and that's a whole nother you can argue that all you want i really couldn't care less the point is 
let's take a look at some of the raw images and then what I'm doing to them to get what I think, to create what I think is a usable, likable image. All right, so let's start with this one. I like this image. I got it to a place where I'm pretty happy with it. This beautiful ready duck here, and she's just chilling in this nice golden hour light until you realize that wasn't golden hour light. Okay, so it was and it wasn't. This is the image uh, that I started with. Let's come back in here. So this is the raw image. So I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna grab another one from the sequence here and we're gonna go through and we're gonna edit this from scratch so that you can see everything that goes into these kind of images. So first of all, ISO 5000 F4, one four hundredth of a second. So it is nice and sharp, uh, but it is kind of far away. And so we do have some nice background blur, but it is still a little busy. So let's just go ahead and clean this up a little bit. So I'm just gonna do some basic stuff for right now. And now the first big thing is I'm gonna denoise this with the incredible uh, AI denoising in Adobe, which I think is just insane. So there you go, there's the before and there's the after for the denoising and this is just seriously impressive. Okay, so that is looking much better. But even still, there's still some more noise in the background, so check this out. So now I'm just gonna go here, select the background, and then bring up the noise reduction on the background. That's gonna smooth it out a lot. Okay, just a few more tweaks and then I think we're good. All right, so now I could do this in here. Let's, it doesn't matter really how I do this, I guess. So now we're going to crop. Just a little bit. I kind of like him at, I kind of like it at the top third there. Plus, I want to crop out some of that busyness. I'm going to put it kind of right in the center, but still in the top third. All right. That's pretty similar to my last one, huh? Okay, so now what I want to do is I'm going to sharpen the duck real quick. So I'm going to make a copy there. I'm going to do this in Luminar. So you can do this with anything if you have Topaz or just in Photoshop or, you know, whatever. But this is just what I have. I don't have any of those other, I don't have Topaz or anything like that, DxO. Okay, so if you see if we zoom in there, just the tiniest bit of sharpening. But this is a global sharpening and the, the masking in here for their subject isn't, isn't great. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to apply it. Okay, so that just sharpened everything, and the duck looks great, but the background has now been sharpened, and I don't want that. So I'm going to come up here to select. I'm going to select the subject. Just a super quick and easy one, that's fine. And then I'm just going to hit the mask button, and then bam, new layer, mask. So now only the subject is there, except it's sharpened the water bits too. So I'm just going to take a brush real quick in black, and I'm just going to paint that out. So now my water is no longer sharpened. So now, if we zoom in to 100%, you can see the before and the after. It's subtle, but it helps, you know? But now we got to make it the golden hour light. So another layer, Control Shift Alt E for my stamp visible layer. Then I'm going to open this back up in Camera Raw, Control Shift A for Camera Raw. Now, we're just going to start messing with color. So first thing is I'm going to bring up the global temperature because I want the duck to be a little warmer too. Okay, now I'm going to bring up the global saturation quite a bit. And then now I'm going to go into the background. So this is where... I'm just going to bring that up until I'm happy with it. 
a little bit of magenta in there. We'll put, and now I'm going to bring up the saturation of the background even more. So now we're starting to have that nice golden hour light. But now, because we pushed it so hard, uh, now if you zoom in, you'll see some blotchiness from the color. And that's pretty typical. So what we're going to do is another, another, another mask. Background, same deal. Come back in here, noise reduction all the way. That's going to smooth out all that blotchiness. And then there you go. Now it's golden hour. Okay, so that is exactly everything that I did to that image. Uh, I know I was kind of fast because this isn't meant to be a tutorial, although hopefully you gain something out of that. This is meant to show all of the things that went into making that image. So having the best gear in the world, just it just isn't enough. And what you see today online from a lot of people is not always how it looks. And like I said, I'm totally okay with that. I like the way that I just edited this. Maybe you didn't, I don't really care. That's not the point. The point is the best gear in the world still needs help because of what we collectively as an artistic community keep putting out. So every one of these images that I've taken on this trip and at any other time have all been edited and they've all been pushed. And the more that you edit, the more that you understand what you can get out of an image. I've harped on this a lot in a lot of other videos, and I think it's super important. It will definitely help your photography and it will help you see things out in the field and it will help you understand immediately while you're out there in the field looking through the viewfinder. It will help you understand what you know you can do to an image to get it to look the way you want in your head before you even take the shot. Knowing that kind of thing and being able to see that in your head will greatly help fight the mentality of, oh, this lens or this camera body or this gear is crap because this shot looks like crap at the back of the camera. That is a horrible trap to fall into. And even the best gear can still, you can still get, you know, if you have unreal expectations. In these scenes, you know, where I'm shooting these images and stuff, like these ducks, some of them are like moderately close, but you saw I had to crop. I was using the 500 with a teleconverter and in crop mode on my R5 for a total effective focal length of 1120 millimeters. And I'm still cropping in 30% on this. So a lot of this stuff is still really far away. But, you know, when you're shooting things that are even farther away and then you're expecting to get better images out of it, you just physics is not on your side. Trying to photograph subjects that are too far away and shooting through too much atmosphere with atmospheric distortion, heat haze, all of that kind of stuff it is going to ruin your shots. And even the best gear with good knowledge and good technique and all of that, it won't save you from physics. So I really hope that that'll help you understand like what's going on and at least in my world with how I shoot and how I edit and all of that stuff. Like I said, I know that none of these images are portfolio images and that doesn't matter because I had a blast being out there and taking them and being outside. Photography is my excuse to go outside. And now that I've spent all my money on that giant lens back there, that's also my excuse to go outside because now it's kind of mandated. But all that aside, perception is the key to life. How you view things, how you act, how you react, that's all super important. And we're only talking about photography here for, <laughs> for reasons. But I hope you can see the application and the extrapolation that I'm hinting at there. Not all of your images are going to be amazing, no matter what gear you have. And the sooner we learn what we can do also in post to get the most out of everything, uh, the happier you'll be. And I'm definitely very happy. I think that's the summation here. I think that's the moral of the story is I'm extremely happy with the lens that I have. It's allowing me personally to do things that I've never been able to do before. It's allowing me to stay out longer. It's pushing me to grow and to get better with my technique and my patience. It's making me want to get out more, which is the biggest thing that you can do, period, is just get out more and stay out as long as possible. My chiropractor is not happy with me at all because when I came home from this trip, I couldn't even hardly move my neck because I was stayed out there and laying down for so long and it just didn't matter. I was having so much fun. So the moral of the story here is manage your expectations, 
be happy, force yourself to be happy. That's like the best thing you could do and have a good chiropractor. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna wrap it up here. If you have any questions, let me know what you think about the images or my thought process or all of this stuff. Uh, I'd love to hear it. If you made it this far, I really appreciate it. Hit that like button for me. That's the best that you could do for the channel. If you love what I do and you want to throw some more support towards me and Camera Lady, you can check out the channel memberships down below. You can join there for a couple bucks a month. You get more access to me. You get behind the scenes videos, some extra editing stuff, you know, all kinds of good things. And it goes so far to help this channel. We really appreciate the channel memberships. And if you want to take your photography to the next level and you really, really want to support me, then check out the workshops page because I offer private workshops. I got a workshop in Scotland coming up next year. All kinds of good stuff. Those are going to be amazing, hands-on, in epic locations. All right, that's it. Got to wrap it up. Speaking of workshops, I got to get this video edited because I'm leaving tomorrow for a bunch of private workshops in a row. I'm going to be gone for two weeks, northern New Mexico, Bosque del Apache. It's going to be amazing. I won't be vlogging any of that because I don't typically vlog during workshops or anything, but I will be taking photos and I will be probably posting photos and videos uh, from all that good stuff on Instagram. So if you don't follow me on Instagram, it's at Hall of the Wild. Uh, links down below. You can check that out. A lot more real time. I'll be posting stuff. So that's it. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.